Can you hear me? Welcome to the Truth to Power show and the Ron Mark show. Uh, we come to you every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, as always, Ron is educating our minds. He's um, having us to expand. And we talked about the birth certificate last week, and we're doing part two on the birth certificate. Ron March. Yes, ma'am. I am are here. You? How are you? Great, great, great. Yes, I, I am uh, excited. Uh, I was trying to water it down. You know, last week we 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 just tipped the iceberg on the birth certificate, okay. and in doing so, I got at least ten. I got several calls, about ten plus, okay. that they were excited on the information, and I laughed to myself and said, "You haven't heard anything yet. I don't know why you we." <laughs> We didn't even get near the birth certificate and what it's all about. And so I've been doing some some extended research because, you know, my mind never stops. It just continuously turns, turns, and turns. And so what I've done now, I've, I've reached back and realized that this type of teaching or this type of message is the key to sovereignty. Everyone should know about the birth certificate, the complete process of the birth certificate, and what and how important it really is. So with, uh, I got one message, I mean, uh, one uh, uh, announcement I'd like to make for Saturday coming up. Okay, okay. On my Saturday on my Saturday show, that is, uh, I have a guest out of uh, Minneapolis. Uh, this is one of the listeners who have really done research. He follows, he follows me all the way. And uh, I talked to him offline, and I talked to him uh, online, and I decided to bring him on and just pick his mind on some areas that we are all interested in. And we're going to try and stay in that, not try, we're going to stay in that 1800 year. And we're going to blow blow the the, 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 the socks off come Saturday. So okay. that will be at 4 o'clock on my, on my website, ronmarch.com, or the blog, uh, radio, talk radio blog, uh, slash Ron March Show. So now, all the listeners out there can come. Now that's oh, four yeah. o'clock Eastern Standard Time, correct? Because yes, you got people yes, listening yes. to you from all over the place. You're right. You're right. I got a phone call the other night at nine thirty at night. I was on uh -huh. my way home on Sunday, and the gentleman was calling from the UK, uh -huh. and he said it was two thirty in the morning. Okay. And he uh, was trying to catch me at a good hour that he could talk. And uh, unfortunately, I was driving and couldn't really get out with the get out. But we've been communicating since Sunday through emails. So okay. I'm excited about this thing. Everybody's uh, searching and looking. And I'm I'm uh, fortunate and happy to be able to get, run this knock in the mind and give it to the people. And so we all can kind of get on the right page and clean up our nation and stand up, you mighty race. And move right. forward. Yes. That is so true. So, that is so true. Yep. So let's start out today, and I'm going to tap briefly. Now, we're going to move into 1928, Bev. That's the year we're going for. But I wanted to uh, bring everyone's attention real quickly to uh, 1666. We didn't talk about that. Now, it may sound like it's not in tune with what we're doing. But once I give it to you, you will understand how important this this is. It was in London in 1666 during the Black Plague, the Great Fires of London. Now, it's weird that everyone that goes to school, uh, I don't know what grade it's in, it's a, if it's the eighth grade or, or freshman in high school or whatever, but I know we talked about the Black Plague, 
I couldn't tell you any more than there was a disease and it killed over half the people in the city. Uh, do you recall uh, uh, any study discussion on the black plague? Yeah, I remember them talking about it in school, but that's all I remember, what you just said. Yes, yes. See, it's, it's, it's ironic or very unusual how they teach us. They never tell us a lie, but they never give us the truth. So we can't say we didn't know. You dig? But that's what makes my presentation so well, because I go back and get them, and I want to make sure you understand what they told you. So the parliament during that period of the Black Plague, the parliament, which was the government of, of uh, uh, England, enacted a act behind closed doors called Sissacute Via Act of 1861. Let me spell that for everybody. You need to look it up. C-E-S-T-U-I. Sissy. Q, Q U E, V I E, three words, barely at four words, A C T. It's called the Sister Q V I Act of 18, I mean, of 17, good gracious, Ron, 1666. Wait, this is the Sister Q what act? Sister Q V I, V I E. Okay. V, v as in Victor. Okay. And then it's a. It was a. It was like a bull, or like a. Uh, or like a, it was an illegal uh, act. It was just proclaimed by the parliament and shoved down the people's throat. Now, so what you became, <clears throat> you had told us with the Sissacue. What, what, what is that? What, what, what was that about? We had talked about that before. Uh, okay. Is that illegal or I, I, I no, got it in my no, yeah. no. What was that? That's the most powerful trust, the most powerful trust that's ever been invented or ever been declared. It's the trust. It's like okay. irrevocable, revocable uh, corporation. It's all about a trust, and you must look it up and write it down. Because this is what happens in the delivery room today when they have your mother sign the application for your birth certificate. She signs to create a SISQ account. And the SISQ account, what makes it so powerful, the, nobody's involved but the trustee, the beneficiary, and the uh um what they call that guy, the the, the founder, the owner, uh the, they don't call him there's a name. Oh, there's a name there's three individuals involved. Three entities involved. The baby is involved, the government is the trust, and then the beneficiaries are the disbursement of funds from the government, whichever way they want it to go. The mama, okay. the family has no say so. The baby is underage, so it is literally screwed and tattooed for 18 years. That's what makes it so powerful. So the mm -hmm. government can do anything it wants to do as a trustee of the account, keep its business going, and at the same time uh, disperse the profits, if you will, quote unquote, mm -hmm. to the uh, beneficiaries. How and then we'll get. To, let be sure and make me bring that up when I get into 1933. Okay. All right. Now, second paragraph. The act being debated was to sub subort subrogate subrogate the rights of men and women. Take your rights away. Meaning, all men and women were declared. Dead, D-E-A-D, -E declared dead, lost at sea, beyond the sea, parentheses, back then operating in admiralty law. That's where the water comes from, the law of the sea. So lost at sea, all persons within the 
dominion of the king or queen of England became uh, a trustee as individuals of this each Sisaku account. The state, which was London, took custody of everybody and their property into a trust. Is that ringing a bell with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. The state became the trustee of the husband holding all titles to the people and property until a living man comes back to reclaim those titles. He can also claim damages. So as long as you stay dead, all of the everything goes to the government or to the state. Hmm. Are you are you are you hooking it? Yeah, up? <laughs> that's just like now how you can go to the state and you can look and see if you have any unclaimed uh, monies or anything. No, 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 no. I, no, I mean, it's no. kind of similar to that. Is it kind of similar to that? No, 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 no. This 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 act or this trust, no one can get in it. But the dead person, once the dead person comes alive, you're talking about a gimmick that they have where you can get on the phone tomorrow, call the mm -hmm. state, and if you got some money out there, you can go pick it up. Right. No, because you're dead. Everybody in the dominion of uh, the uh, realm of England is dead, D-E-A-D. -E and they can, you can only claim your rights and your properties if you become alive. Now, how is a dead person going to become alive? Is you going to become Jesus and get raised from the dead? I, 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 I was hoping you would, I would suck you into saying that. Listen, all corporations, all sister accounts are fictitious accounts. It's a piece of paper. It don't exist. It's a piece of paper. The only real thing about it is what you believe it to be. So I just gave you the ramifications of it coming from the queen, and then you asked me how can you come alive? How can she declare you dead? And what is her definition of dead? You, you, you get it? Yeah. You need so, to, yeah. You, you you need to understand all of the ramifications before you ask that type of question, because I know that you as Beverly D is alive, but you as Beverly D all caps is dead, because the all caps is what they created in the Sister Q account. That's why your birth certificate comes back in all caps. You didn't get that, Beth. Well, I'm trying to see because, <laughs> okay, so they deal with nothing but fate. Uh, the, the whole system is fate. It's not. I mean, well, everything, you, they're dealing with a dead person. The, yes. the and you say, account are, really are you fake. saying, wait a minute, are you saying fake as F-A-K-E? Or are you saying faith as F A I T H? I didn't understand that word you used. F A F A K E. All right, good enough. All right, good enough. All right, go ahead. Now, everything in the system is fake. Everything is fake. And you're fake because you're tied to the birth certificate. That's why I had to go back and start back in six, when this all started. You think that that mail in your mailbox that came today that you owe Sears and Roebuck $20, you think that's you. And that is the dead individual. That's a dead entity, Beverly D, because it's all in all caps. Beverly D, if I was next to you, I could pinch you. And when you say, ouch, 
I would say the ouch is the real Beverly D. That paper or uh, that Sears and Roebuck uh, a, re, uh, a bill you got, it didn't say ouch. Beverly D said ouch, upper and lower caps. Now, how do you get the system, which is fake, F-A-K-E, to yep. deal with a live person? Because everything they're dealing with is, is fake. So yeah. when a live yeah. person comes in, how do you get yep. them to deal with the live well, person? They don't want to I deal don't... with no live person. They want to deal with dead All right. people. Yes, yes. Well, I could tell you that in five minutes. But what would happen, you would be free until they sent you a million dollars, and then you would take it and give it right back to them. So it's not fair for me to tell you until you understand what they did. You can't unravel it because I told you it's all fake. Because the IRS is fake, but they'll come and knock on your door and take your butt to prison for not paying taxes, for, for the example. Now you sit back wondering how in the hell did they do that? Ron said that all caps is fictitious, and yet I'm sitting in prison. How did they do that? And I'm trying to explain it now. That's why we in part two. Okay. Is that fair enough? That's fair. Okay. All right. And I hope I can explain it uh, better. So you'll understand, let's put it that way. Now, mm -hmm. uh, I just told you London took uh, possession of all of your wealth. You were not even eligible to apply for your wealth or even apply to be alive until you became an adult. And the adult age across the earth is 18, come from the United Nations. So now at, at 18, you can... Go after your uh, uh, CESICU account. But you cannot do it as a slave because every subject, and I want to talk about that. Maybe I should flip over to it. The king and the pope runs everything on earth. You may not want to believe that, but they run everything on earth under a fictitious Phenomena. And they use, the Pope uses ecclesiastic, uh, uh, what would I call it? They, element. They call it an element. Ecclesiastic element to prove that you do not own anything and you can never own anything until, I'm bringing it up now, until you become free. Elements of ecclesiastic laws, and I try to put it where I can get right to it. There it is. Now, United States gave up all rights, titles, and interests. If you claim to be a United States citizen by your own admission, you also have no rights, no titles, no interest. The United States of America, which is a corporation, by contract, gave up all rights, titles, and interests in said and in said property without any conditions set forth. And they have the case number of when they did this, and it was done in 1995. They gave up everything to the Pope. Now, in 1871, they, they incorporated and made the Pope and the Queen the trustees, which I told you about last week. Our survey of legal landscape, as it extends in March of 1980, indicates that, in general, members of the public have no constitutional right to be protected by the state from harm inflicted by any third party. They have the case number down here, the, the case law down here, that when it happened. Now, what, all, what does that mean? And this is what really shocked me today when I recently got it. Listen to this carefully. 
we the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our prosperity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. Now, that's the preamble to the Constitution. So now, I'll add... Okay. I heard in the beginning it said the United States, and then at the end it said United States of America. Correct. Correct. Because... When you read the Declaration of Independence and when you read the Constitution of the United States, they use the words United States only. They didn't start using the United States of America until they set up the corporation. You are looking for a place in this madness and you're nowhere in this. You are of America. So what you just read didn't say anything about America. It talked about the United States, and it talked about the United States of America. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Now, United States was founded in 1789 with the Constitution, or if you want to get technical, it was founded in 1776 when they declared their independence from England. But the problem with that is, the lie is, a slave can never declare himself free. How are you going to declare yourself free? So apparently they never were slaves, but they were subjects of England. England them over here to do what they did and put us as Americans under the domain of the Queen and the Pope. <laughs> we, we, through ignorance of schools, going to that damn school, public school system, grew up with the with the thought that we were American citizens, which we were not. We were, we were and have always been sovereign. Never were we citizens of the United States. We have always been sovereign. But our ignorance, and that's not an ugly word, it's just you didn't know any better. You thought that they were talking to you. And they were not. So from 18, 1776 all the way up to 1871, that's almost 100 years, United States never had citizens. There was never. We the people did not pertain to anyone other than the 13 colony CEOs that set that trash up. Out of our ignorance, we thought that we were the people. Now, we are the people of America, but we don't have a constitution to that effect. Why? Because we're indigenous. We don't have to have a constitution to that effect because we've been here all the time. Now, listen to this carefully. The intent of the European was to set, coming out of England, uh, the Revolutionary War, uh, Declaration of Independence, the uh, Articles of Confederation, all of that was a scam done in revisionism in order to teach you a lie so you would know the truth. There were four things put in place that I discovered today. That's why I tell you, my mind never stops. And when I when it hit me, I almost fell out, fell out of the chair. I said, oh, my God. 
Oh, my God. I don't know what to do about it, so I'm going to lay it on the people. Y'all listen. Okay. The United States of America had to be set up, or they wanted it to be set up, as a democracy which does not exist. And I got I, I'm a, I can prove that to you because my show yesterday, I, I, I read it, and it showed that democracy is on paper. There's no such thing as democracy because when you put people in a democracy, it collapses. Now, you could put people in a republic and it will, excuse me, it will work. But you cannot put people in a democracy. Why? Because democracy only means he who has the big stick rules. You've heard that a thousand times. But you act like you don't want to hear it. And then every time they, they always say, well, they, 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 they used to get away with the fact that they scattered black people all around America so the, so the uh, uh, major cities would always be dominated by other than black people. So they could say they're minorities. We don't, uh, you don't, you can't work, democracy don't work for you because you are a minority. Now, you took it as being black, but they were saying that you didn't have the numbers right. now, in the past now mm -hmm. to, to be able to overrule. But once they went into the Industrial Revolution and all the blacks were flooding into the cities, such as Detroit, we became the majority. And in your lifetime, Beverly, right after Coleman Young left and they were bringing in all this trash for mayors, they were still calling us minorities and we were 75 to 80 percent black. Where did they get yeah. that crap from? Yeah. And nobody, them damn pundits, them jack leg ass preachers, all them punks and sissies and civil rights all-stars, none of them said a word about it. They wasn't allowed to talk about it. Now, here are the four ingredients that was put in place right before our eyes. And they shaded it away with a lot of malarkey. Number one, write this year down, 1856. What happened? Dred Scott case. What did it rule? Dred Scott could never be a citizen of the United States. Don't try to act like you didn't hear me. Dred Scott was a blackie. They give you the song and dance about him down there in Ferguson, trying to get out of Ferguson, come up north to Illinois, and dad, oh, nigga, please. It's over with. You will never be a citizen of the United States. It's on the record today. That's number one. Number two, 18, no, oh, that's three and four. 1865. Write that number down. The 13th Amendment was written and, and so-called enacted, which is all a lie because there was no government. They just put that in there. Then they said there was a missing 13th Amendment. When was it missing? No, it wasn't. Y'all just, just y'all in, 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 in historical uh, re, uh, re revision, you took it out. Now, they only gave you two sections of the 13th Amendment. I don't know why y'all ain't mad, because there are 20 sections to the 13th Amendment. None of them read the, the way that the two sections read. None of them read that way. But the overtones is there, but it is not there, because number 12, section 12 says, no one with African descent will ever be a citizen of the United States. That's number two. Now, number three, 1868, they created the 14th Amendment. Everybody act like that's something good. No, it ain't. Because they never had subjects in Washington, D.C., they never had workers. They never had slaves. So what they had to do was create a slave market, but don't call them slaves. So what did they do? 
They created the 14th Amendment and said that they are 14th Amendment citizens. And some of y'all are proud to be a 14th Amendment citizen. But yet, in 1870, uh, 1779, everybody was citizens. But they changed it. You only had to answer to God in 1700. But in 1800, you had to answer to Washington, D.C., them damn Peckerwoods over there in Washington. That was number three. Number one was Dred Scott. Number two was uh, uh, 13th Amendment. Number three was the 14th Amendment. I hope y'all follow me on this. Number four, 1870, they, they created the Naturalization Act. And in that act, it said all Europeans, all individuals of European descent, will now, hence, and forevermore be known as white persons. This is on the books, y'all. This ain't something I'm making up. This ain't something that some old teacher's going to get up there and talk about. Uh, we all free. We all this. We all that. No. Quit listening to that trash. Take, the, take what I'm giving you. Go look it up for yourself. 1870, it said, clear as a bell. It's in the Naturalization Act. Any individuals of European descent will now, hence, for, and evermore be known as Old Peckwood, white people. That's number four. What was the name of four, 1870? If you read your history in antebellum, they never use the word white. You never see the word white. <laughs> you tell me what they called them. They called them settlers. They called them pilgrims. They called them frontiersmen. They called them invaders. Read back in history and see if you, ever, if you see the word white person before 1870, um, oh, yeah, yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Now, 1870. Okay. Number five, this is a clincher. They created the government over these four items and incorporated United States of America. Now, what does that mean? Wait a minute, what that year was that? 1871. This is when the United States of America became, was uh, developed. That's when the corporation was yes. formed. Okay. Yes. Yes. Now, if you take all those ingredients and stir them up, you may not want to say it, you may not want to be a part of it, but what you will get is white supremacy, white racism. The country was founded on white racism, and it's on the books. This ain't something you can dance around. How in the hell are you ever going to get a break when the, when the law says you ain't nothing? And you keep begging to get in. They pay them punks. Oh, Lord, let me quit. They pay, they pay them people, those Negro pundits, them Uncle Remus Negro pundits, and them damn angel mammies. They pay them to teach citizenship and all patriotism, all of that BS. Because they got a job. You don't have a job. <laughs> Isn't it ironic that out of all the tragedies on earth today, up to and including chopping them Peckerwood's heads off with Isotola, whatever they call them, ISIS, where are the white preachers? Why ain't they in the street marching? Hello? I'm listening. All of the, all of the hunger in the United States, all of the unemployment, nigger preachers is out there. The government said, get your buns out there and keep the natives quiet. 
and saying we shall overcome and we'll get our goodness in the by and by. I could take a brick and hit a preacher right in the mouth and go home and sleep like a baby. So is that how come every time something happens, they send Al Shoftran? Yes, ma'am. That's his job. Whoever heard of a preacher, reverend, that wears $2,500 suits, $1,500 shoes and shirts and ties, and don't have a church? Where that money coming from? Now they cover him with uh, these jobs that he has on radio. Right. So then, right. okay, good, good, good enough. But his predecessor did the same crap. He didn't put him on the radio because the nigga couldn't talk. That got that that Jesse Jackson. Right. He had a suit. He twenty five hundred dollars. He did all the same crap. Where is it? This church. Then they start talking about Rainbow Coalition. I will give everybody out there. If you ever heard or seen anybody in the Rainbow Coalition? They just like corporations. They're a fictitious entity. The government pr promotes that. Both of them punks is on the CIA, NSA, the alphabet uh, payroll. Both of them. And there's a lot more out there. Whoa! And all preachers don't have to be paid. You got some niggas that will put on the suit with shoes look like come from Tom McCann's and get out there and think he into something because the white man will respect him because they know he's a preacher. They don't have to give him any money. Like I said, the best snitch in the world you could ever want is one that don't know he's snitching. Preachers are nothing but snitches. Help me, somebody. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, Ron, let's keep moving on. All right. Now, we're wheeling and dealing, and we're working with certain issues. Last night, I did a expose on the Pope of the Vatican. For all of y'all that didn't hear it or see it, if you want to get a copy of it, uh, I can send you the paperwork. It's so important that I'm going to give you just a little bit of it today. Now, why would I want to do that? Very simple. Because in eight, I always say we need to study the time frame of 1850 to 1870. Everything I ran on you today, other than the sister Q account, happened in that period of time. There were more blacks, millions, not a few, millions of people of color were murdered, raped, and burned, and stolen property in those 20 years than anywhere else on earth. The record of death is higher than the, the, the daggum Jewish, the Jewish hangout talking about six million. It's been more than that. And they're still killing the day. And they did it under the guise of ethnic cleansing. And a pope was behind it. And I'm going to give you that right now, because I know y'all ain't going to believe it. They're going to say, Ron, where are you getting this mess? I'm going to lay it on you. Now, I get nervous when I look for it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Last night I had a, I had a ball. Okay. I'm, just going to give you, I'm just going to give you a little bit of it because you missed it. So you need to get the tape or go to the archives and pull it up. Now, there was a, a papal bull. Are you familiar with a papal with a bull, Beverly? No. A Catholic? Okay. Uh, Lincoln had made a statement, an announcement, called it the Emancipation Proclamation. It's only a announcement by an elected official. A bull is the same thing but it has to be announced by the Pope in office. He can make it up. He can do anything he wants. 
Once he says it's a bull or however they declare it to be a bull, B-U-L-L, is called a papal bull. That means that the Pope said it. And the Pope is supposed to be God's word on, word on earth. Okay? Now listen to this. In 1866, the Holy Office upon the orders of Pope Pius IX did declare on June the 20th, 1866, slavery itself considered as such in its essential nature is not at all contrary to the natural and divine law. And there can be several just titles of slavery, and these are referred to by approved theologians, commentaries of the sacred canons. It is not contrary to the nature and divine law for a slave to be sold, bought, exchanged, or given. That this position was officially published as part of a campaign to encourage European and Latin American Catholic nations to enter the war on the side of the South to ensure that most profitable slave market for the Vatican remain in check, operational. A false, of, of historical false statement, morality and dignity, heresy, heresy and contempt by the fundamental roots of common law of 1871, because the Pope did not want the United States to incorporate under the laws of the original Constitution, because common law is the law of the land. In all the state laws, all of the documents coming from the original Constitution, they all come under common law. The Catholic Church cannot function under common law, because common law gives you a right to pick your own God. And the Catholic Church said that the Pope is... God or the name, spokesman for God. This is deep, y'all. Yes, it is. And I'm telling you, and European and Nazi Catholic nations to enter the war on the side of the South to ensure the most profitable slave market, which would be United States, most popular, profitable for the Vatican, remain operational of historical false statements, moral indignity, her heresy, and contempt for the fundamental rights of common law. That Pope Pius IX, through a papal bull pastor aust austerness, I don't know what that word is, did publish an, an, a, a, a herical, herical false statement claiming the Pope is infallible and therefore is both above all laws of humanity and cannot be questioned by faithful Catholics. That this Pope, this uh, papal Pope, is one of the greatest her her heresies and openly contemptuous documents against the entire alleged spiritual spirit of Christianity as well as the human race. That, where we at, done jump too much. Uh, that, this open, uh, Christianity done, I'm jumping too fast, I'm getting nervous. And contempt for the Holy Spirit of Christianity was done deliberately to lessen the emphasis on Jesus and increase the emphasis of Mary. In line with the most ancient satanic worship of anonymity, and I don't know all these words. Female God of power, sex, and war. That's some God they got. I'm telling you. Now, y'all can get a copy of this. I, I, whoo, or you can look up. But the, the title of this article is called, let me go back to the top. Pius the Ninth died on, on uh, February the 7th, 1878. He was succeeded by Pope Leo the Thirteenth. Most evil crimes of Pope Pius the Ninth. 
Uh, you can you can work with that any way you want to. Now, okay. here's here's where we are today. Slavery in America and the shock of the old. They have always tried to act like slavery was back then. It don't exist anymore. I, as a white man, had nothing to do with that. And I just prove to you that the government that that European respects has written laws in his constitution to keep us in slavery. And he will fight for the right to protect this law. It ain't my fault he don't know that it says that Ron March has got to be a slave and can never get into this constitution. Every one of them. And don't get upset because we got a multitude of blackies that feel the same way. That's how dumb and ignorant they are. That's how much they don't read or study. Or better yet, that's how much they go to church and listen to the bull crap that that old Jack League is putting down. Or they'll follow people like Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton. Or these, or these civil rights all-stars. All this trash. That's on the payroll of the government to keep us in the dark. And all I'm trying to do is raise your consciousness that it's all a lie. Now, as I look uh, at the that article, yes. was that article from the Catholic League for Religion and Civil Rights? You know what? It was from a Catholic. I uh, cut and paste. I took it out of the article. Okay. So you'll have to do that search okay. on your own. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> but it definitely came out of a Catholic something. Mm -hmm. um, here, we, uh, uh, you know, that's best I can tell you right now. Okay. Uh, uh, if I get challenged on anything on any level, I bet you I'll go back and get it. You know, big deal for me. Okay. Now, let me jump over here. And look at, where am I at? I want to make sure that all my callers are in line. There we go. We got a, uh, a couple of callers, and we got, oh, man, we got a lot of information. Let me take a caller. Do you okay. have any callers? Man, uh, I got one. Let me see okay, what that is. Go ahead. Take yours. All right. Uh, caller 6403, area code 314. Are you there? Yes, yes. How are you doing today? I'm very good, sir. How are you? Can you hear Yes, I uh, can. How are you doing, Mr. Mark? I'm just I'm trying very... to say, man, keep up the good work. I, I love everything you're doing right now. Okay. And you got a lot of people here, here in St. Louis, you know, listening to you, you know, and uh, taking in all the information you're giving. Uh, all right. Now, don't leave me hanging. I want you to do some research, too. So when you call in like this, uh, yeah, you, you tell leaving, me. No, I'm, okay. I'm all in it. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm right. right down there in Ferguson. I'm right around the corner from there. All right. Well, so, when you get in this information, yeah, in when you call... All right. When you call in like this, I want you to be sure and give me some more information that I can deal with. But I appreciate your call, brother. Well, all right? Uh, okay, I, I, I had one more thing to say. It was about a show you did a couple weeks ago when they was arguing about Marcus Garvey not trying to go back to Africa. <laughs> Do you remember that show? Don't, don't they, bring I, that I up. I have to say this, man. I, I, I'm just having just to do this. The guy that was on there talking about he wasn't trying to go back to Africa, the man bought a boat, and the boat they sold him to go back to Africa had so many flaws in it, he couldn't afford to get it fixed. So he tried to take people back. Now, I just had to, I, I've been listening to all your shows. But, uh, all right. That's all, all right. I have to say. All right. All right, brother. All right. I appreciate you. I appreciate all right. you. I, I appreciate all right. you. Uh, all right. I think I'm doing right. this right. Good enough. Uh, I got somebody in the chat room talking about the United States Supreme Court decided 7 2 against Scott, finding that neither he nor any other person of African ancestry could claim citizenship in the United States. That's what I said. Did, yeah. did you get that, Ben? Yeah. 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 And that was the first one. Remember I told you we talked about five. Right. I want everybody to to look up those five. 
But I gave you the date and I gave you the subject matter of each date. So you can get your head on right so right. you don't get fooled with this with this madness that they be putting down. All right. I appreciate it. Okay. Now, uh whew, got, I'm a little nervous. I'm trying to get back. <laughs> I'm trying to get back, and I can't remember which way I was going. All right, I do know. Okay, now, we are going to move into 1928. If there's no questions, and we got about uh, seven minutes, if there's any callers, we can deal with that. But I don't have any callers. And if you got anybody in the chat room or any callers, Bev, we can deal with them. And i like to start fresh. When we come back. When we come back. Uh, yeah, on 1928. Mm -hmm. You did? Okay. If, if you got any uh, questions, comments, answers, anything that you would like to talk to Ron about, you can call 347-215-8041. Uh, and Ron, what's your number? My number is 718-506. 1864. I couldn't have got a better number. 1864. All right. 506-1864, area code uh, 718. Okay. Yep. All right. Oh, wait a minute. Now, wait, Ryan. We have a, we have a yep. call in here. Um, All right. Area code 773-537. Yes. Uh, good evening to you guys. Uh, this is Sia L. Hey. hey, how you doing, Ron? Hey, how you doing? Hey, now. I'm very uh, good, brother. How you? Yep. All right. Yeah, I just want to expand cool. on the uh, uh, the origins of the birth certificate, and I just want to add this to you, and I want everyone to listen very, very closely. Well, the birth certificate right. was actually, actually started in actually in 1483 under the reigns of King Richard III. It was called a Sesti K V Trust, but the original name was was called a Altre Rotre V. Now, as it was going on at that time, they passed it along to Henry the Seventh, and then they passed that act on onto slavery and the slavery system to the Americas. These are three former acts that they how they passed it on through those generations. So what wow. they did was when they first did it, they didn't do it. They did it with their own people. I have the information, Ron Morris, to you to give you all the canons and all the sublime information on what you call positive law upon the trust of the Sister K channel. You look up on it, it's called oneheaven.org, and look up on the positive law. It has the most sublime information that you want to get on the, on the Internet about law, indigenous, and everything with all aspects of religion and all to give you full, complete understanding verbatim. Ooh. Unbelievable. You said oneheaven. You said, call it, you said oneheaven.org? Correct. And it will give okay. you the entire history, the entire, every law, every leader, every king, all of the show you the, chrono, the chronological uh, of how it's been passed down through the years since, for, since the 1400s. Wow. You have to see it for yourself. Wow. All right. That adds to what I'm going to talk about in 1933, because they set up the so-called perfect government in 1871, which was a democracy, but they had to make it work with the police department and the judicial system. Because they had to put fear in the people. Yes. Yeah, that's when they yes. first implemented it, though. When they first, it was in 1741 when they first implemented it. It just didn't pass. They finally got it passed in oh. 1871. So they've been trying for wow. over 100 some years to try to get that passed because, remember, they was using it generations before since King, with King Richard and King Henry VIII. That was the strategy to give. Yes. It wasn't a bad thing to have to have a set K channel. It was to give to the 18, between 18 and 20 year old men and women, to, to uh, have someone to be a beneficiary, beneficiary to their trust so they can handle it to get back on their feet, and then they can sign out of it. What they did is they closed down the, that option, and that's where it created the chaos oh. after that. Check that well, out. What, they, what it sounds like, they created the perfect government under democracy that never exists, but they made it exist with uh, the police force. That's what it sounds like to me. 
All right. I appreciate it, brother. Well, thank you, Carla. Excellent call. Right. Thank you. Yes, yep. Yes, it was. All right. I was just reminding him about Saturday. Okay. Uh, uh, we, I got a guest out of Minnesota. We're going to do some research on the Indian tribes, all of that territory out there, which is known as Indian territory. And then they have the uh, uh, where we live in Michigan, which is the Northwest Ordinance. See, they, they petition off the entire, uh, the entire uh, United States. And they begin to steal. They begin to rape and steal everything, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, so what they did, they uh, had this territory, and all these states was out there. Now, in the uh, ordinance where I, we live, uh, we had five states, and partial one third of Minnesota was in our territory, which was known as the Northwest Ordinance. And we're going to talk about that because Minnesota, the land, is very valuable. A lot of people don't know that. And also, you had Oklahoma territory up there in that same region. And uh, yeah, you know, it's it's up. It's it's a lot of history and a lot of murdering, looting. Genocide, ethnic cleansing. I was looking for that clause of ethnic cleansing that they used, and I, I failed to pick it up. Okay, let's let's move on, Bev. Into so you uh, say that's uh, Saturday at uh, four o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. That that's a regular Ron March show uh, that's been on for uh, a long, long time. Okay. But that that. That uh, time slot has always been used. Okay. okay. Yeah. Now, we want to deal with, and I think I just knocked it out, but I got a, another one here. We want to deal with 1928. Now, this was after Marcus Garvey was uh, exiled. They never found legal charges against him. But they exiled him because his citizenship was, he was from Jamaica. And since Jamaica was a colony of England, I guess he chose to go back to, or go to England. They put him out of the country. And they had to do that because he was too much of a powering force. He organized black people. He still has the record for the largest organization domestic organization on the history of the earth and that is seven million plus members to his organization the united negro uh, universal uh organization i can't give you the full name but a lot of heavyweights were in that movement one of the humongous heavyweights was a good brother named timothy drew who was born in Oklahoma Territory. No, no, Carolina, North Carolina. And he, uh, his name was Timothy Drew. He studied among the Indians. Now, they use that term. And, and that was put in the books back in the 20s when they used Indian, the term Indian a lot. We have learned since then, and Noble Drew Ali was not an Indian. He was a black man, a black moor. But uh, they, they they put in the books that he was raised by an Indian tribe, you know, that type of tribe. Mm -hmm. So you got to be careful when you read certain things. Because like I told you, you will, you will not see the word white man in America's history. Because they didn't use that color code until after 1870, which is very important. Okay, they use a term that threw me for a loop when they said Americans. They said Iroquois, they named off all the Indian tribes. They named off the Europeans as being, uh, you know, a settlers and all these invaders. They used them, and they called them uh, pilgrims and stuff. And then they used the term American. And I had to get on the phone and call a couple of people. And they told me that the Americans were the original inhabitants of North America. 
That's why they called them copper people to throw them off. We, hello, we are copper people. Now, I hate to use that term because the European with his dumb ass, he created that to throw everybody off with copper people. There was a drive by some of the uh, black heavyweights in the Moorish nation, some true Moors, that was getting their DNA that would say that part of their DNA was copper people to show you the falsehood of this DNA garbage that they're doing. When the government figured out what the blacks were doing, they either bought out bought out all of the DNA organizations or th did threaten them and told them if it showed up that there was a uh, part of the DNA that, that was not, I don't even know how to say it, that was not of the natural names, which would be copper people. He said if the, if the person that submitted it was black, just put in there, change it to African, Amer uh, African American. Mm -hmm. Ain't that and, that, and that's what they're telling the people when you on the phone and they ask you, you know, are you African American, white? And they yeah. tell them that if we don't want to tell them uh, what we are, or if we say other or something else, for them to put in there if uh, what we are, if we sound like we African American. Correct. That's what they did. Mm, and so, doing that um, now. yes, and then they used uh, just to show you how treacherous our people are. That damn Skip Gates, that that beer drinking, peanut sucking nigga, that the police beat him up in his own house, who went to the White House to drink beer and eat peanuts with with Obama. He's got he's a he's a professor in one of the black colleges a so-called black history professor. He has a program on Sirius Radio, and some people say it's on uh, 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 cable TV. I haven't seen it, don't want to see it. But he's promoting a DNA for uh, 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 a rich blacks, you know, uh, entertainers mm -hmm. and all of the prominent blacks, mm -hmm. and everyone, and he's using terms like you come from the tribe of Wachatuchi in, in Nigeria, and all, all kinds of madness. <laughs> and since people don't know, they're so happy, they don't know what to do. Right. So you got to do some extensive research if you think you're going to get a decent, real DNA, because it's all fixed. Because the government cannot let it come out that we were the original inhabitants of this land. Their entire program will collapse. Their entire earth will collapse when it comes out that black America was here in America, never came over on them damn slave ships and all that crap, trash that they put out there. Okay, now let's get right into this. In 1928, there was a strong movement by black America to declare independence. The government, on the other hand, threw uh, blacks like our mulattoes, like Booker T, uh, W.E.B. Du Bois, uh, Frederick du all that they could find of that light complexion. They used them to create an offset to Marcus Garvey. So they had to give him. Now, the mulattoes were smart enough to say, or the government just offered them a package if they would play ball with the government. Now, let's not leave out uh, uh, Ralph Bunch and that other that other Negro, uh, Ralph Bunch and uh, Frederick, uh, 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 woo, Thur Thurgood Marshall. All of those were mulattoes, ladies and gentlemen. They could have played on both sides of the fence, but they were chosen by the government to create a world where they could lure all of the educated blacks into this so-called, and let's call that side, the talented tenth. 
That's what that was all set up for. So Garvey, who had announced that he needed, just like Elijah Muhammad did, we need educated blacks, engineers, doctors, lawyers, architects. We need all of that. We got the laborers to do it. Let's build our own nation. Well, the government immediately moved on Marcus Garvey with uh, trumped-up charges and at the same time created this alternative for these educated blacks, whoever they may have been during that time. Now, they were letting in only light-complected blacks. And if you go back and check, uh, all the black colleges were founded in the period of 1900 to 1920, not all, but the majority of all the black colleges. They were set up quickly in order to teach. But but Booker T told them that we need to teach our people to get along with white racism. And I hope that... What's going on, uh, uh, Ben? Uh, excuse me. Me. That's me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Are you doing, you doing dishes? <laughs> no. That's anyway. Moving the computer. Go ahead. All right. All right. Well, they told uh, Booker T that they wanted him to set up a program, and Booker T came out with this talented tip. And he told black people that we need to build our own nation, but we need to learn how to get along with white supremacists. And he lured people in with that concept because there was no jobs other than those that were sanctioned by this talent and tent and these Negroes, these Uncle Remus Negroes who would send these blackies, and they do the same thing today through the boulets and the sororities, I can't call them, of high five, 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 all that crap. They send these niggas into the white system that they are, uh, uh, what would you want to call them, peaceful uh, Negroes that can be trusted. And they push them all in there, and the government or the white supremacist government accepts them, but he keeps an eye on them, of course, with his FBI. Now, what happened in 1928, United States of America realized that they were broke as hell. And the international banksters coming out of the Civil War and coming out of the Jesuit church that we just talked about, they wanted to be paid. And the government of United States of America did not have funds to pay them. So this jet, I, I was told this, I never read this before, but the Jesse James and the, and the Frank James and the whatchamacallum brothers were commissioned by the United States government to go out and steal all of the gold and silver they could find from the private enterprises and bring it back to the government. Now, a lot of things happened in the early 1920s and late 1800s. And that was one of the major factors because they had to sanction the gold and get it all in one place because they were setting up what we know today as the 1913 Federal Reserve Bank. All of this is in in a timing manner going into 1933. Well, they knew that they had to put all people in the United States into a program where they would help pay or individually pay the debt that the United States had. Black people in the early 1900s and the late 19, uh, 1800s I would say less than 10% of all black people in North America were citizens of the United States of America. All you got to do is stop and think. They wouldn't let us in the army, not because we were black, because we didn't have a right to be in the army, because it was a white man's army and a white man's war, white on white. When they saw that they could use the blacks, then they began to change the program. However, the blacks 
being ignorant to all of the knowledge that you're getting today, most of the blacks went to France and joined the French army. And all you got to do is look it up. Don't tell me nothing about it. Because these peck of woods in the United States, they had to wait until 1950s or early 1960s in order to give up the medals that these blackies had won during the wars of, 19, of World War I and World War II. That's how racist they were, but they had to find the law to recognize them. Because the laws of the United States of America was clear as a bell. No niggas can be citizens of the United States. And it's still the end of the day. So don't ever come to me talking about I'm a citizen of the United States. Never say that to me. And you should be offended if they say it to you. Because it's in the Constitution that you cannot be a citizen of the United States. So, they knew they had to do something. So what they did in 1929, so let's count, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. It took five years of planning to figure out how to get the black people in America, quote unquote, all of these non-citizens of America into the United States of America and make them slaves and subjects to the sovereignty of the United States of America. So they went and created this Geneva Convention. And all of the records of the Geneva Convention can be uh, documented, except I think they said it was 1930, 30, one, of the, one of the 30s, I'm not sure, when they set up the bankruptcy of the earth, that was the key to flipping everything in because they had to do something about the debt. Now, if anyone has ever filed bankruptcy, the, only, the best thing about filing bankruptcy, and this goes all the way back to 1600. The best thing about filing bankruptcy is you are given a automatic stay. S-T-A-Y. If you got a Black Laws Dictionary, look up stay. S-T-A-Y. That means that no one can make you or charge you to pay. No one. Because you have a federal stay. And that's the key to filing bankruptcy. Now, if you file a seven and win, all debt is wiped out. But if you file a 13 or an 11, that is you agree to make arrangements to make payments. But as long as you're in bankruptcy, the stay is always in place. That's important. Everybody should realize that. Now, here we go. So people, so people... Uh, that's losing their house, say, for taxes or mortgage. If they do a bankruptcy, they can't come after their house. Now, you, 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 you're bringing in a modern-day trickology of the okay. government, which is known as lift the stay, which means it's like lifting it up, going in, bringing the house out, and then lowering it back down. Mm. Okay. And since the government is crooked, the judges are crooked, the lawyers are super crooked, they made a deal that they could do that because the houses and the, the industry of homes was one of the biggest industries that they needed to work in the new world of a new economics of nineteen thirty three. So they set that program up where they could lift the state. Now, it is unlawful to do it because there's a rule that says if they lift the state, whoever goes in must show ownership before they can take it out. And I'll ask you, Beverly, we done went through this a hundred times. <laughs> Everything that you own, nobody ever signed but you. 
Right. So right. so how can they take your car or your house by lifting the state? But now when you do that, they have another little caviar that says you have to do a proceeding. What do they call that thing? Anyway, it's a gimmick that you have to do. And now the judges want to know who told you how to do that. Now, he knows from your conversation you are a dummy. You don't know nothing about bankruptcy. And he knows that no lawyer is allowed to do it because they all belong to the bar. What do they call that? It's called, it's called um, adversary. Listen to this word. And you need to write it down if you can spell it. Okay. Adversary, adversary proceedings is what it's called. Now, the judges don't worry about adversary proceedings. That's when you make them prove that they own the house before they go under the stay and take it out. But now the judge has to protect the lawyer and the corporations because he's going to ask you, what do you, who put this in your paperwork? Now, you, if you say a lawyer did it, they want to know who lawyer, what lawyer, and they're going to disbar that lawyer. If you say you did it, the judge is going to say you're not that intelligent. So now we're going to do this, this, and this. He'll play games with you to just confuse you that you don't know what step to take after that. Okay. You see what I'm saying? All right. right. Okay. I didn't want to go off the subject. All right. Let's get back. So now with this five years of the Geneva Convention, they set up all the rules, regulations, and they said the earth, all the European nations on earth that attended the Geneva Convention will file bankruptcy. And they're going to use United States as the key to how to use the bankruptcy to your individual co country's advantage. All of this was set up by the Pope and the Queen and United States. Now, in, in 1928, while they were doing this uh, shenanigans, there was a convention held in, in uh, uh, Havana, Cuba, called the Pan-American uh, Conference. They, and that meant all the nations in the West, Western Hemisphere, all the nations had a big convention in Havana, Cuba, and they invited from United States noble, let me call his real name, Timothy Drew. Now, this teed United States of America off, I mean, because the uh, Secretary of State, who should have been invited, was a European from another country, so they said that he wasn't even qualified to be there. <clears throat> See what I'm saying? Right. He wasn't even qualified to be there. Noble Drew Ali went to the convention and was given all the honors and uh, dignitaries of the convention. They told Howard Hughes, Howard Hughes, they told S Secretary Hughes, get out of that seat, sit over there in the chair, that seat belongs to Noble Drew Ali. They then told Noble Drew Ali through this convention, and the chairman of the convention was a, was a heavyweight, and I hope I can pronounce his name, Ernesto, Ernesto Butsumani was his name. He challenged United States to the uh, 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 what would you say? The ownership of United States. Why were they there? They couldn't prove it, so they gave it to Noble Drew Ali. Then they gave Noble Drew Ali a colonial title to the land from the Gulf of Mexico to the uh, Canadian border, from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean. All of that land belonged to Noble Drew Ali, who left the convention, went to Chicago at the Register of Deeds in Cook County, Illinois, and, and recorded the transaction in the Register of Deeds. It's there today. I have a copy of that registration. 
Did you get all that? I got you. All right. Now, now did they let him sit in the seat? Did, was he able to sit at the convention? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, it's difficult to find out what he said or did at the convention if he wasn't there because all of the uh, the notes were taken by United States of America, and they do not mention Noble Drew Ali, but they did mention that they were having problems with a few countries who were supporting Noble Drew Ali, but they never mentioned his name. Okay. okay. All right. Now, the purveyors of so-called white supremacy were just walking around, I mean, walking alone, minding their own business, suppressing, destroying, and are misrepresenting the truth about history. The Moors history is particular when out, when out of nowhere came the Savior for the fallen people that they had ex ex exterminated and extinguished the light of life within his appellate. His name was Noble Drew Ali. Having traveled the world, Noble Drew Ali obtained knowledge, wisdom, understanding, and outstanding and overstanding into the many truths the oppressor were working so hard to hide. After detecting our true identity as Moors and, as, and our true history as possessors, of the oldest artifacts and burial sites in what has been misnomered as the so-called Americas, as opposed to the lies the so-called white supremacists were spewing forth, all blacks were brought to America. All blacks, who the thing jumped so much, I messed up. Hold up. Every time I tap it, it moves too much. All... Okay, all blacks were brought to America by us as being their slaves. Noble Drew Ali implemented a series of actions to begin the process of resurrecting our people from the comatose of death labels, uh, levels, dead levels. Thus, efforts accumulated in the re-emergence of the Moors as a community in the sense of body politics that was restating and rebuilding into the nation once again. Body politics. You need to look that up. Granny ran our, our families under body politics. That's where it came from. Granny, your granny, the old granny, the hand-me-down granny that had the black Bible. She ran the families under body politics politics. I told you several weeks ago, Beverly, that the Europeans had a secret meeting in 1774 that they was going to exterminate the life of the Moors in the United States. Now they're talking about the 13 colonies at that time. That anyone that was seen with a feds a, a robe, any type of garb of, of uh, Islam, sandals, teaching the children Islam, they would be dealt with, severely dealt with. So the point was, Moors and Islam were never mentioned in the history books of the Pecklewood European. Remember, he said it in the United States, not in America. We haven't had any books about America yet. I have not read any books about America. I've only read books about the United States and then the United States of America. Right. You dig it? But I want to know, who is the Pope coming to see this summer when he said he's coming to America? Well, when he said that, I would guess. Now, hear me clear. Mm -hmm. And I'm guessing. He's going to look for a more. Hmm. He's going to look for a more. Or do you think he's going to talk to the so-called Indian? I, I'm going to say it again. Okay. He, he knows there's no such thing as an Indian. Right. We need to stop, try to stop using that terminology. Okay. So he's going to try and look for it because, remember, 
the United Nations that was founded in 45, their records show from all of the documentation of artifacts on Earth that the Wachita Moors in the Michigan area of the Northwest Ordinance are the oldest indigenous people on earth. Yeah. That's not a coincidence. They were here before there was an Indian. So I don't think the Pope would be dumb enough. He ain't that dumb. He got all the he's got all the records. He knows everything I'm saying. That's why he handles himself so timid and so well <laughs> because he knows the ins and outs and the do's and the don'ts. Mm -hmm. You did? Right. <laughs> that's all I can say. When, he, when you told me that, that's all I can think of. Mm -hmm. All right? Now, just like this, this statement, all blacks were brought to the Americas by us to be our slaves. They didn't say brought to the United States. They were brought to the Americas, North America, South America, Central America, which was not America. It was El Maroc. Okay. Now, 1928, let me try to move this thing slowly. The Pan American Conference was held in Havana, Cuba. Secretary of State Hughes went down to represent United States and the noble Drew Ali went down to represent the Moors. At the conference, the mandate for the landmass of Greater Emaxium, North, South, and Central America, the misnomer of North, Central, and South America, was returned to the Moors. Noble Drew Ali knew what this meant. And what the ramification of this was and it would be, several stopgap measures were taken by Noble Juali to secure our, the Moors, birthright inheritance and benef beneficiary interest as Moors to the landmass within the aforementioned land mandate. The actions of Noble Drew Ali were detected by the so-called white supremacists. Notice what they call them. White supremacists. Come out of 17, I mean 1871. They built a white supremacy government. So everybody that come out of that were white supremacists. And they're the same thing today. Obama is a white supremacist. A mulatto. You can't get no more mulatto than that nigga. You got white mammy and a black pappy out of Africa. <laughs> he is truly an African American. All right. I know people hate me for saying that, but it's a, it's a fact. The action of Noble Drew Ali was detected by the so called white supremacists, and they immediately proceeded to act, to act, to do all they could to impede his work and take him out. They put a contract on him. Fortunately, nat natural law governed all events. Thus, by the time they op the oppressor made his move on Noble Drew Ali, Noble Drew Ali had already put things in place. The, sac the sacred, this sacred and international banksters, because land and labor is where all of our wealth comes from. Land and labor. From the cardinal world, the Anoja Ali had just yanked all the land from so-called Alaska, I said Canada, to so-called Argentina. I take it back. They gave him the land from Alaska to Argentina, out from under them, even though we, the Moors as a community, were mentally comatose, had no idea what was going on. At that time, the international banksters recognized that the, poten that the potential for our instant return to our people of uh, prominence, all the global scene, uh, uh, scene existed. Thus, the international banks would recall all of their loans in a panic, which in turn put a squeeze on the stock market, which, closed, which caused its collapse two months after the assassination 
of noble Drew Ali. Nevertheless, the so-called Europeans on both sides of the Atlantic knew that their system was and is existing and functioning on borrowed time. They also realize that the length of that borrowed time is directly tied to the length of our moors, ignorance of us being ignorant, lack of knowledge of ourselves, our history, our culture, and what is rightly and justly ours. Today, we don't know that. We still don't know it after 1928. Damn near going on 100 years, about 80 years, we still don't know what's going on. This fact is what was compelled the so-called white supremacists to do all that is possible to keep the undeclared mental comatose moors from ever waking up and reclaiming all that rightly belongs to our people and at the same time keep the rank and file unsuspecting so-called Europeans from finding out what is really going on. Drew Ali works as a as a works at his works as a result of what transpired in the Pan American Conference touched off a flurry of activity on both sides of the Atlantic Ocean because the so-called European from both sides of the Atlantic Ocean knew what was coming as a result. The action of Noble Drew Ali caused the so-called Europeans to assemble themselves to conspire and plot a way to deal with what they thought would be the re-emergence of the Moors to whom their respective countries are tributary to, as they always have been, the United States and the Barbary powers. Uh, this came from this, this writing. The United States Barbary powers by this guy, uh, uh, David M uh, Machi, written in 1800. I better, go, I better look that up. Documents this fact. So we're talking about a 12-year uh, page, pages, 12 pages. And if anyone wants a copy of this baby, it's called, let me get to the top, it's called uh, The United States Bankruptcy and the Moors. United States Bankruptcy and the Moors is part one, and there's a part two. Do you have okay. any questions so far? Well, somebody in the chat room was saying that um, uh, Obama is not a uh, white supremacist because you have to be a white you have to be white to be a white supremacist. But he is uh, you can be a supporter of the white supremacist. Okay, I'll pass on that. Okay, <laughs> because he's the CEO of the White Supremacist Corporation. Okay. So what and so what does him? that make him? Yeah, what, what that make him? Yeah. Right. So if he, if he wants to dance around it and say he ain't, I don't know what else he could be. You dig? And if he's a supporter of it, being the CEO, I hate him as much as I hate white supremacy. So what, I don't understand. Yeah, well, yes, I do. We'll let, I'll let that go. I got it over here also. It said, Brother Obama, uh, Obama is not a white supremacist, right. but he does support the agenda of white supremacy. You must be white to be a white supremacist. Non-white people are just supporters. Wow. <laughs> okay. Uh, what can you say? I need nothing I can say about that. I'll let that go. You dig? Now. Right. Now they had to do something to show the earth how to deal with this panic because all the money started shaking and going through changes. So they set up in the United States, and, and no one has ever questioned how uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, I yeah, wait, sir. Might have found the Sorry about Go ahead. I was pulling up. Go ahead. All right. Franklin Delano Roosevelt spent 12 years as president. It's ironic that nobody ever talks about that. How did he do that? And if he hadn't have died in office, 
He could have spent another four years in office because who was it, Truman? I'm looking at him. I think it was Truman. Truman. His vice president had to take over because he had polio in a wheelchair and all that kind of crap. And I found out a couple of things. Number one, he was a Jew. He changed his name from Rose of, uh, Rose of Felt to Roosevelt, and he was never married. Eleanor was his sister. Are you serious? <laughs> That's what I was told. Eleanor I was, was his sister? Yes. Um, yes, yes. I wasn't there. I don't, you know. I don't know. Right. Here's you know, that. Okay. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. But now... We need to talk about the New Deal because this is where the 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 birth certificate played its most dangerous role. They took all of the knowledge of history about uh, about. Oh, excuse me, Ryan. I'm um I'm copying these uh, articles that you're talking about, and they got stuff on them. Okay, go ahead. All right. Um. They took all the knowledge of the of the birth certificate, all the way back to six, 1666 with the Sister Q uh, 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 Vi Trust that I talked about. Then that brother that called in in 814, uh, I'm going to look that up also. They had it going on back there. Then, then you come forward, and they created a government that had been proven in history could never work unless you had, a, a, unless you could do it with controlled people, which was a democracy. So they set up this thing called the United States of America under the guise of democracy, under the Christian religion, and they used the ecclesiastic corporation in order to put it together. We need to understand that. And by doing it that way, they had to have a force. They had to have a force in order to keep all of the subjects in line. So what did they do? How did they keep the subjects in line? Number one, they had the largest police force and army in the world. Number two, they create fear. Let me see if I got that up. They create fear on a daily basis in order to keep you completely petrified as to what's going on. And all you got to do is look at the news every day. Every day. They blow crime out of proportion. They blow uh, war. They talk about war. Every president in our lifetime has always declared war on something. And when I say something, I really mean something. And with that declaration of war, he can promote it because of and, I, and I'm going to flip to this real quick before we leave to show you how they can create this thing. If everybody would, is, that's interested would look up the 14 characteristics of fascism. This is what the United States of America is built on. Number one, supremacy of the military. You use your own terminology because I'm got, trying to work fast. Number two, uh, rampant sexism. Number three, control mass media. Number four, obsession with national security. Don't forget we got that land security, whatever they call that crap. Everybody trying to bomb America. They ain't convicted nobody legally. Everybody get thrown in jail for crimes that they didn't commit. Number eight, religion and government are in a, in a wind. They have to put it in because they use Christianity, and they promote the preachers in the black community to talk about going to heaven, and we should be thankful that we wake up every day. 
Oh, I could, oh, I could do something to them preachers. Lord, help me, somebody. Number nine, corporate powers is protected. Whatever corporations do is not a crime. They will figure out a way to make it not be as bad as it really is. Number 10, labor power is suppressed. What happened to AFL-CIO? What happened to the UAW? What happened to the Teamsters? Why is it we don't have any power from the people anymore? Nobody even talks about it. You haven't heard them mention labor movements anymore. Number 11, disdain for intellectuals and the art. They don't want to bring on people that can give you co concrete educational positions of knowledge on certain issues. They bring in bums. Every network has a, uh, a, a, a ca cadre, cadre of bums. Look at that crap, crap on uh, uh, Fox News. Look at what we got in Detroit. Look at that trash they got in Detroit. Never talk about anything of interest. Number 12, obsession with crime and punishment. They will promote crime wherever it's found in the United States, make you think it was across the street to let you know crime is there. So we need police. And the police is not there to protect you. Police is there to protect the corporations and the codes of the jurisdiction of each corporation. That's the only job a police officer has. That's why they take two oaths. Number 13, rampant 90 crony. seconds. Something getting ready to get cut off. Uh, rampant cronyism and corruption. That's number 13. And number 14, fraudulent elections. You know I don't have to say anything about that. All right. That's all they have is fraud elections. And this is what makes democracy work in the United States. And all of those things, they keep quiet off to the side. So you'll never realize what they're doing to you. All you do is play along with the game as they put pressure, on, put pressure on your butt. You dig it? Right. Yep. So, that birth certificate is the artificial person. Look up this word, E-N-S-L-E-G-I-S, Ennis Ligus. That's how I pronounce it. I bet I'd be right. And all that is is a piece of paper that they will make you think you are the paper. And that's the straw man who was born with your birth certificate. And if you can get it in your noggin that that's not you, you can set your own self free. And anyone that wants to ask me any questions about today's presentation, Ten I can send you all of the emails that will back up everything that I've said. <sighs> Are you there? Uh, yes, I'm here. We, we're, uh, we listening. Uh, we, you have, uh, what, 10 seconds left? I'm on zero. But those my, that most that are on the phone will be able to hear hear you anyway. It's the ones that's on the internet that won't be able to hear. All right. Well, I got some. Uh, my my uh, chat room is coming in with some good stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. let me see. Uh, well, they they probably room. in your. They probably on your phone on your in your switchboard in your. Uh, mm -hmm. Which room? Oh, okay. Well, I can stay with them. Bankruptcy and the Moors. They got they got websites. Anybody want it, I can send it to them. And the Moors original series. Oh, yeah, this is all good stuff. I can uh, deal with it. <clears throat> I got another one here, Characteristics of Fascism. Uh, that's what I read, the fa Characteristics of Fascism. Uh, here we go. E-N-S-L-E-G-I-S. I can't pronounce it. I call it is it Igus Ligus. <laughs> That's best I can do. Okay. I'm a high school drop. I'm a high school dropout. I can't. That's know. okay. You're doing good. You're doing good. Yep. But but what's going on is we need to know that the birth certificate is not us. That was the birth of the straw man. 
Everybody out there need to send me their email address and ask for paperwork, and I can send you a nice little ebook on straw man. I, I, I downloaded it today. You need to read it. Quit putting me on Front Street doing all your work. You need to do some work yourself. And we can do that. Come Saturday, I got one of you listeners who's going to help me get out of the hole because they're going to bring some information and knowledge to you. And I like to get more people that have any type of presentation and prove to me that you can deal with it, and we'll go on the air with it. Now, okay. Sam, before we leave, um, the birth certificate is the straw person, the fake person. How do yes. we? How can we prove who we are since we have no paperwork on it? Why would you want to? Who are you going to prove it to? Well, to, if I'm saying that I'm not a citizen. Just my word is good for it. I don't have to have anything to, just like I say, Ryan, I'm not a citizen of okay. this corporation. All and then right. you Let ask me, me how do you, do you have something to show me you not? do? I, that's what I'm asking. Do I need something to show or just my word saying I'm not, a, or just me claiming I'm not a citizen is enough? That's a good question, and here's the answer. You're going to and I and I you're going to get your uh state state birth certificate and you're going to own it. I'm going to show you how to own your own birth certificate. That's number one. Since since you, Bev, had nothing to do with setting it up, that birth certificate, as you know it, is going to stay in the system. You don't want to be in the system. The birth certificate is always going to be over there because it belongs to them, not you. So when they call you, you want to go down, take the birth certificate and say, I am Ron March Upper and Lower Caps, and this is the birth certificate all caps. So I want to know what do you want with my birth, my birth certificate. And whatever they say, you say, well, there's a price. All crimes are commercial. They're going to say yes. Then go to this account, this birth certificate, this uh, Social Security account number, and take the money out that you want. I'll sign for that. <coughs> Just like a check. I'll sign that check and give you the dollars that you want. But you can't take me because that's not me. That's hard for you to understand, ain't it, Beth? I'm getting there. I'm really getting there. Yeah, I'm getting there. You're not. You are not that piece of paper. You but what about are, if you have a birth certificate that is an upper and lower cast? Don't worry about that. If okay. you got one, they have already set up your account in all capital letters. You won't get a. Uh, you won't get any type of bill. From anybody that's in upper and lower caps. I shouldn't say you won't have, but I doubt if you'll ever get a bill from Sears and Roebuck in upper and lower caps. Okay. Because they, they cannot communicate. See, remember, Casper can only talk to ghosts. He can't talk to human human beings. Right? Right. Right. Okay. That's, what they say. So, that's right. So all caps can only talk to all caps. And since Beverly D is up in lower caps, that whatever they talk about ain't you. But now you can prove it once you get your birth certificate. And I told everyone I'm going to put it on my web on my uh, website how to get your uh, a birth certificate from the state. And let mm -hmm. me announce right now. Let me announce right now. Everyone out there that's listening has two birth certificates. I said this last week. You have two. One from the county. Mm -hmm. that's, the one, that's the one everybody got to take you to school and, and pay your taxes and all that kind of crap. The other one is from the state. You want to own the one from the state, which created the one from the county. Because if you look at the county, it'll tell you there are two dates of birth 
on your county birth certificate. One when you were born, a natural person, which will be on your state birth certificate, and the other date is when they filed it to make you a straw man. I mean, that's, on your, that's on your county birth certificate. Yes. One that comes from the health department. The other one comes from vital statistics. That's where the money is. Vital statistics. County ain't nothing but a tracker. Now, I'm, on my birth certificate, it's another date than what I was born, and it says date received by local register. Is that what you're talking that, about? Yes, and that's the okay. date of the of the straw person. Uh, now, see, I was born on September the 3rd. Now, on this and, date, they have September the 20th. Okay. So September the 3rd. Uh, Beverly D. Upper and Lower Castle was born. Right. When you get your right. when you get your state birth certificate, that's going to be the long form. It's going to say uh, the that date. Well, I love forgot the date already. Whatever that September date the twentieth. No. No September the third. Yes. Yes. Okay. That's when Beverly D. You 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 got to stay with me. That's the, okay. that's when Beverly D. Was born. The third. Right. The the straw person from Beverly D was born on the twentieth. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. All right. Now you got a couple of calls, Ron, before you go. All right, come on with it. Okay, we have a caller from nine eight zero two three zero. Nine eight zero. Are you there? <laughs> Okay, what about 941-462? Hello? 941? There he is. Hello? Wait a minute. Can yep, you hear hello. me? Hello? Which hello, one is this? Are you... 941? Are you 941? Yeah. Okay, speak up, 941. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, Um. I just wanted to... Uh, Add on to what um what the Marsha says. Um, you asked a question about how you you know besides you declaring verbally or vocally or in the court, how did how do you show that you um now you are a citizen? You have to live. You have to learn how to live not, uh, live um outside of the U.S. So that's that's you know, that goes into yes. public and private. Um, yes. Yes. Uh, dealing with public yes. and private. Yes. He's totally correct, Beth. The the uh, the uh, county birth certificate is public. Okay. The state birth certificate is private. You got to uh, go to uh, yes, yes. Yeah. No wonder that when you try to get your state birth certificate, can't nobody else get it. You have to be the one. Yes, uh, Beth. You uh, now you got it. Now you got it. I okay. see that. That old noggin. That old noggin open up. Right? <laughs> it's open. Huh? Every time I talk to you, it's open. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 And okay. I'm going to give you the instruction. I tell everybody I talk to, don't call me unless you have your state birth certificate. And none of them thus far has had it. So I tell them how to get it. And I tell them don't call back until you until you get it. Okay. And, and then I'll tell them where to go uh, once they get it, What the uh, next step. Right. Okay. 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 Well, all, all right. right. All right, Beth. Until next week. Okay, and so you will also be on Saturday with your guests at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Correct. On Ron Marshall. Okay. All right, Beth. Uh, we're going to take a break.